I saw her passing. I heard Daniel say, oh shit. Appropriate. And I turned around and she was half submerged in the ocean blue. And Daniel, our captain, refused to do the work to save her. I screamed and Steiner both screamed. Lord, don't let it happen to her. But our captain refused. Because his lazy ass wants to sit on a square bucket instead of a round one. We are now a square bucket crew. Damn it. Damn it. And that now is our new official shitter. It's actually not that bad. This is a story about three good friends, Dan, Dennis, and myself. A dream of sailing down the Pacific for three months in a really small boat. And a documentary of the entire experience. I've called it Reaching Reality. A story of a really cool adventure and the discovery of a dream. Are you recording my little friend? <laughs> What have we got there, Stein? Fucking, Dark, Stein. That's a fighter, dude. Woo! Oh, it's another bonita, isn't it? Shoot. Holy shit, keep those choppers away from that. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Holy God. That's a big one. You gotta get my right here. Ah. Holy shit, that's a big one. <laughs> that's the biggest one yet. Steinerman has caught us dinner. What you got there, Stein? Stein? Bonita. Oh, I think. Right? Two. What are some of the defining characteristics of that fish, Stein? Uh, actually, these are fucking. They're hefty guys. Yeah. Six pounders? Yeah. Um, they're in the tuna family. The stripes running along its back. They say there's, they'll actually change colors when they die. That's some hefty fish. Pretty fish. See that steak, Stein? Not a bad steak. Our fish taco. Take a look, good look at that taco. We had now been traveling consistently for the past seven weeks from San Francisco heading towards Cabo San Lucas. Having departed Isla Cedros a day ago in search of predicted surf, we stopped over in Tortuga Bay to fuel up and resupply. Here, now near the middle of the peninsula, the desert brought with it a golden hue that made you want to reach out and touch it. While en route to resupply with gas for our voyage south, you could see that golden desert translated into the people and the houses around. We finally got the gasoline we needed, but no cash. Pay for it. One of the first major dilemmas of our trip <laughs> we are down to, I think, uh, $25. No, steiner has got 100 bucks in the book. We're down to $125. So there won't be a bank for another two weeks. Having collected our gas and discovered some concerning issues about our finances, we decided to take up the offer from a local and board a skiff out to the middle of that golden desert and search for fossilized shark's teeth and a little luck to take on our passage south. Yeah, holy shit, no. Well, I feel like a paleontologist. 
right here, like right out of Jurassic Park, is a bone, which I'm not going to take the time to uncover. Quite interesting. Stein discovered that. And while I hate to bore you with dialogue, this is just loaded with shells. Now there are spaces in this open desert that at times call to the vast depths of life that live infinitely within us all. Within those spaces, you can uncover countless amounts of untold stories from the ages of time past. There must have been massive amounts of sea life in this era. Those stories possess treasures, jewels that you can take with you for life. And if you search hard enough, you will find yours for the taking. Shit. Holy shit. Look at this motherfucker. Holy fucking shit balls. Jesus Christ, Wasman. Treasure man. On this day, we did just that. We searched and were rewarded with a gift from this eternal space to take with us throughout life. Oh, that's nice, man. That's hard day's work, man. <laughs> you got shit on. Yeah. Our ride is coming. After a day of searching and discovering, we returned to our boat, where we were met by the blessed local who had shared with us the secrets of this golden space. We are between Point Abriojos and heading towards Scorpion Bay. Punta Pequeña for you mariners out there. I believe I have found myself on this journey and lost myself several times. Jesus Christ, that's some heavy shit. Returning to sea the next day, we were on the final leg of our objective of Baja San Juanico in our search for surf. Austin found I, I, a bob between who I know I am. I, I kind of got lost there for a while. I think I lost focus. I lost focus. I, I focused too much on the relationship and not enough on the point. I would say at this portion of the trip, after being on this trip for... We're about 60 days in, Bosky. 60 days. That does not feel like I've been on this, spent 60 nights on this small boat. Uncle Rich said that it would become a lifestyle. It becomes a lifestyle. And I guess in some ways it has become a lifestyle. I, I was thinking about that last night. There's the initial excitement. Then there's the struggling to find your routine, and then there's setting in, getting your routine. Feeling pretty good. I like it best when we're moving, or when we just arrive at a town, and it's really comfortable little, it's easy good. access to the town. Surprisingly enough, I've lost a little bit of the interest in surfing. Yeah, the lack of surf hasn't been as much of a blow as I thought it would be. I mean, I, I'm usually so beat when we get, when we wrap up a sail, I'm like, the last thing I want to do is hop in the water. I've found more interest in filming a lot of stuff, as much as I can. I have begun to reach... <laughs> narrative here. Just pulled into Scorpion Bay. It's probably about 3 a.m.
lighthouse and GPS brought us home. It's been a little bit tough to get anchored and situated because of the massive groundswell rocking the boat. Another day of epic surf ahead of us tomorrow. Need to catch some disease before charging the lineup. We now had been traveling consistently for three days to reach San Juanico and Scorpion Bay. Having suffered through another long night sail, we had arrived in what we hoped to be the mecca of our surfing exploration. That looks pretty fucking good. Go. Thurman, all you had to do was put your suit on and start paddling. Waking up the next morning, we were excited to have uncovered what we had been searching for. But we were not alone. There were others, lots and lots of others. Having so many people around was entertaining to watch, but frankly it seems strange now having come from such isolation. I'm prepared to compete against the crowds. We walk north from the main point where Dan and Dennis found a section of waves all to themselves. Then, as the day drew to a close, Dan deservingly caught the best wave of the trip. There he is. It wasn't going to be on the front page of a surf magazine, nor in the highlight reels with the pros, but it was truly a rare moment of pleasure in a trip that had taken so much to get here. Watch yourself. There it is. The way of the day. Totalitas Limporadoras. Few things are better than Totalitas Limporadoras when you need a shower and a pinch. These things, my friend, do wonders for making you feel fresh all over. God bless them when you're on a boat this size and you haven't showered in a week. Waking up the next morning alone while my companions were out surfing, I began to reflect. We arrived in some town, I'm not sure which one. It doesn't really matter. We're lost. We had been on the boat now for 55 days. While just shy of two months, those seven weeks had felt exponentially long, brought on by the daily suffering and struggle of traveling in this space. I like when we get to a town and I can get off this boat, that is very true. Get off this fucking boat and walk around and not sit in this fucking two by two. 
While I had overcome and adapted to this mode of travel, the struggles on the boat had pushed me to the extreme. Are you fucking kidding me? Did I really sign up for this voyage? In my journal on this day I wrote, I am tired of the imbalance of this life, the extremes of suffering and pleasure. It continues to drive me further away from society and leaves me feeling alone and without friends. I need to return to the balance and order of life. I am ready to go home. Two weeks left. We've been at this for two months. I could not handle a year on this boat. I am so ready to get off. Now, after nearly two months at sea, I was starting to come to terms with my reality and what I wanted for my future. Now, can you think part of being a loner is you're afraid of getting hurt by people and you end up alone. Uh, and I think that has more to do with it than sailing or being on a boat. It's just, there's a disconnect from society or something. It's kind of scary. I don't know. I have it. When I went to Santa Cruz, I, I saw more of myself than ever. I was very alone in the cabin by myself and I was doing all this shit and I said, you know what, I'm, I've got to make some changes, i got to get away from this shit. i got to stop running away from people, i got to stop seeing every place as a temporary place. i got to see some place, at some point in your life you got to make some, some place a home and say that's this is where I'm going to be through the good times and the bad. And uh, I think the thing about a boat is there's... You're never, there's never a home. You're always just attached by strings. You can always cut the lines and go. This was becoming a turning point for me. A moment of clarity. That one's happiness is someplace between the chaos of adventure and the order of the day to day. We're hanging out with Chris from San Diego. And what is his name? Kurt. Chris Chachi, and Kurt? They call him Chachi. Chachi, these guys have been putting us up for the last, putting our stuff up for the last couple nights. The experience was enough to drive me off the boat and back to land with some new friends that we had any, found. Any, any thoughts on uh, this wave here? That's the name I've ever served. Yeah. How long have you been served? Um, well, like I, I've been in San Diego since I don't like surfers. <laughs> I've decided. A lot of pomp. A lot of pomp among the surfing crew. Yeah, that one guy's a pretty good meat thrower. He gets got fucking got more jargon than a weatherman. I like that. More jargon than more jargon than a weatherman. Yeah, he fucking rides his high pressure in and then he drips down behind the low. A little bit of precipitation in the morning, bro. And then he fucking's covered up. Shack house, bro. Green room. Oh, yeah. And then he gets out and he smokes a fatty with me. Yeah. Now we're like totally pros. Hey, fatty dude, bro. My fatty. Having been in isolation now for nearly two months did have its pluses and minuses. Having every wave, every beach, every piece of land to ourselves was a luxury we had taken for granted. Now we had again rubbed shoulders with society and the sensation left us with mixed feelings. One that we'd hoped that by resupplying the boat with water and getting ready to move on would wash away. Mm. Yeah, coming. There is not the drone. When you see now we put out the we're going, we think we lost the dinghy again. It's not in the place it was. And Dan went off running for it. So we'll see if he found it. As we should have known, however, we couldn't escape unscathed. And we nearly lost our most treasured asset as we were nearing departure. We were driving up, we got out to walk. It was stashed up here behind the rocks up here. He's like, oh, he's like, they left it till night. They were gonna come back and steal it. He's like, listen, he's like, we're not a bad town. We're two people that you gotta watch out for. And I was like, oh, I understand. He was like, I shouldn't be shit on the beach like that. You can't do that in the States either. Great job. 
Ultimately, however, the desire to escape the eyes of our onlookers would drive us to rush out, and with it there would be collateral damage. It was a less than romantic departure. Well, we lost Stein in the bag overboard. <laughs> First man overboard. <laughs> we were on, we had to stop, we were rushing around so that we could have this grand exit from Scorpion Bay from all the people we met. The great sailboat sails up. We're leading into the wind a little. She's hanging to the side. And then Stein's backpack went overboard. And, and then, <laughs> and so then, Stein. then we dropped everything. And Stein went overboard. And then, you pissed off about losing your stuff, Stein? Uh, a little bit. Upset more about the cameras than anything. How many cameras have you ruined on this trip? This is my second. You want to count me as ruining Daniels? That would be three. Stein has destroyed three cameras. I think the reason I'm so happy in the mornings is because I'm so fucking glad that there's light and I'm awake and it's drying Night's out. Over. Yes. I'll tell you this much that. <clears throat> it's real wet. I get it. I wake up sopping wet. <laughs> I have stopped zipping myself into my bag. I should sleep in the dinghy and be drier. <laughs> I'm putting my wet shirt on tomorrow. <laughs> I I've stopped. I've stopped um, sleeping. <laughs> well, <laughs> sleep is no. I've I've stopped sleeping and si zipping myself in my bag. I now sleep on the carpet and throw the bag over top of me. So when I wake up sweating, I can just pull the bag off. It's ridiculous because I'll, I'll put a shirt on because I'm cold, but then I'll sweat so bad in it that it'll be it's just painful. There's no need to really take that outside. Let's take this outside, boys. Ah, oh, God! Damn. Oh my God! Did we get that on tape? Oh, we got the bump. We were now back in the open spaces of the Pacific, and again isolated from all of society. We have acquired a new mate on this boat. It is a new species of animal on this boat. The housefly, and I am, I hate the housefly, and I'm going to make it my mission to kill every fucking, I'm gonna make it my mission to kill every housefly this boat. From here on out, I can't stand it when they land on me or talk to me. The isolation from the deep sea adventure started to shape us into a tribe of our own. Sometimes the sea starts to eat away. Or if she does indeed. Show them your friends, lad. Show them your friends. We as a tribe would know each other better than anyone else would know us. That is some foul shit. Sometimes we're a little more intimate than I'd like to admit in this boat. <laughs> and with that knowledge of each other came great freedom of exploration. Holy shit! Yeah! Wow. I got it. That exploration would take us to see people and places that few would ever see. Pedro! Pedro! One such place was the discovery of the solo lighthouse keeper on Isla San Geronimo. At times within our exploration, we sought out isolation from each other. More often than not, however, our greatest pleasure in exploration was in being together. 
What a great event tonight. We have the Dodgers. LA Dodgers represented by Dennis Stein and the San Francisco Giants represented by Dan Watson. And it's the windup. And the pitch. And it's a home run, ladies and gentlemen. That's out of the park. We were now very much alone and very much together. And in that, there was nowhere else to be. Trabajo. Holy shit. What is that? What is that? <laughs> How do you say to like your work? To gusta trabajo? Es bien trabajo. Bien trabajo? Sí. Sí, sí. Un, one month here and then they're in La Paz. And... Sí.